Here we're going to print an etching, start to finish. So, get some water and get your paper with your initials on the back, place it in the water and give it at least half an hour before that goes to the press. Get a clean dry towel and lay it out on the table. Now we need to set the pressure on the press. Normally, when you approach the press and it's not in use, there should be blankets laying upside down over the carriage. Roll the press out as far as you can in one direction or the other. Place the blankets in the appropriate order, in the appropriate side up, halfway down the bed so that the blankets aren't hanging over. Roll your bed underneath the cylinder and then using the handles, bring the pressure down to the appropriate point. Once you've done that, pull your blankets out of the way and you're ready to put your template in place. Here's my paper template and a piece of clear mylar over top of it. You don't have to tape the mylar, although I find it's helpful, it keeps the mylar and the template from moving. All right, here's what we need to print. We've got a copper etching plate, we've got a palette knife, we've got some ink, we've got our tarlatan, and we've got some gloves. So here's a can of ink, this is an etching vine black, and here's an archival warm etching black. And most of the time you should be able to pop the lid off without a lot of effort. Sometimes though you'll get a stuck can, and if that's the case, try doing this. The key is to not hurt yourself with the knife. If you can't get it open, try a different can. But with a little patience and persistence, you'll probably get it. Now one of the cardinal rules of taking ink out of a can is to not gouge it. Don't stick your knife in there like it's a jar of peanut butter. Skim the surface. Take out a small amount of ink. You can always get out more if you need it and using your knife, place it on the glass surface and move it back and forth to warm it up a bit. If your ink has lots of little chunky bits in it, foreign matter, hardened up bits of ink, you can use a small piece of tarlatan and sift the ink as it were. Push it through and essentially allow the tarlatan to capture the chunks that we don't want to end up in our print. Once we've done that, we can clean our knife slightly and then scoop up our ink and put it back into a bit of a pile. Now the inky mess can get out of hand pretty quickly, so sometimes it's best to clean up your work area just slightly with a razor blade. And with that, you're going to find either a small rubber squeegee for applying ink onto your plate, or in the case of colored inks, you can use these bits of mat board. The mat board is disposable, you can only use them a few times, so the rubber tends to work quite well and it doesn't scratch the plate. So what we're about to do here is pick up a bit of ink. You can see it's not a huge amount of ink. And depending on your comfort level, either on the glass or holding the plate up or against your apron, you're going to begin squeegeeing the ink onto the surface of your plate. Now if you've never done this before, this is not the same as oil paint. This is really sticky. It's highly pigmented and it can make a real mess. What you're trying to do is put ink on and with the force of your muscles and the squishiness of the rubber, kind of take the ink off at the same time. We're going to attempt to cover almost the entire surface. If you had a plate that had only a small area that needed inking, you would still want to ink the whole plate because of plate tone. You want a certain kind of evenness. Next, after covering the plate and then removing as much as we can with the rubber squeegee, we're going to take our tarlatan and turn it into a ball looking for a kind of clean area on the tarlatan. We want it to be nice and stiff. It's going to feel a little like what happens when you flex your hand out there, that, that muscle, that's what you should be feeling. And we're also really trying to avoid any bits hanging off the end because they tend to dip into the ink and then make a mess. So forgive me here, this is a little awkward with the camera, uh, but I'm going to do my best with the plate on the glass here in real time to start wiping the plate. So you can see I'm pushing down, I'm going fairly quickly, I've been doing this for a long time, but you don't have to go nearly this quickly. I go around the entire surface of the plate, removing a bit of the ink, and then I'll open up my tarlatan, which is starched cheesecloth, and then find a slightly cleaner area and then re position the puff and go over the entire surface of the plate again. I'll probably repeat this three or four times before I get to a point where it's almost ready for printing. That first round of wiping is sticky and it's hard work, but as the ink comes off, you'll find it gets much, much easier. The key here is to go over the surface of the plate, 
and then reposition the tarlatan so you've got a clean spot again. You can see here now my drawing on the plate is beginning to emerge. The final wiping of the plate with the tarlatan, I'm moving quite quickly, but I'm almost not touching the surface of the copper. I'm just skimming across it, and you will find this by experience. At this point, you're almost polishing the plate. There's still a couple of more steps, but this last little bit of tarlatan is quite easy and very, very satisfying. And now we have a pretty good idea of what is on the plate. So reach for a red rag, double it up, and stick your finger in behind the rag, and as carefully as you can, without pinching or squeezing or really putting your fingerprints on the surface of your plate, wipe all four edges. This is why we bevel our edges. It makes it easier for cleaning and it makes a much cleaner overall print. I tend to go back and forth three or four times on each of the four sides. Once you're done with the edges, we're going to take little bits of phone book and using the palm of our hand, as best we can, we're going to very slightly and lightly glide over the surface of the plate. This isn't really wiping away too much ink at this point. This is just attempting to even out the plate tone. You may or may not be able to tell that it's there, but if you look, there's a small amount of ink that's come off. What you're trying to avoid doing is scratching or scrubbing with the phone book. It's not going to be very useful for you. If you need to use your fingers, do your best to go as lightly and smoothly as you can. Again, try not to scrub because the plate tone is hard to see, but you will definitely see it when you print it. Because I'm really fussy and I think it makes for a much better print, I go around and wipe the edges one more time. And now I place my plate onto my template on the press. I've got a little bit of metal here. I could have a pencil or the end of my X-Acto blade with the blade itself pushed in, and I use that to put the plate into position. A little rubbing alcohol and a blue shop towel will take care of any smudges that might be on the mylar that will eventually print. So with nice clean hands, we are over to our water bath and we pull the paper out and let it drip for 10 to 30 seconds, depending, and then move it over to our towel. Flip the towel over and blot away the moisture. Your paper should be wet, but it shouldn't be shiny. And now to the press. Place it down very carefully with your initials showing. That way you know it's the back of your paper. And once you get it in place, try not to move it. And gently lower the blankets over top and smooth out the wrinkles. And now we spin the wheel or crank the handle, depending on the press we're using. You can go fast or go slow, but whatever you do, maintain your speed all the way through. And when you get to the other side, pull your blankets up and out of the way. Again, nice clean hands, peel back your paper and have a look at your print. Looks pretty good. Now we just need to make a whole bunch more. So we place it on the rack and allow it to dry. I'm gonna pick up the plate and move it over to the glass table for inking a second time. Before I do that, I wanna make sure the press is ready for the next impression. So I wipe off my mylar and Gloves back on, and here we're going to watch printing again from another angle. I'm going to tidy up my workspace slightly so that I don't end up with a lot of ink on the bottom of my plate, and repeat. So, I just printed, I don't have to clean the plate off. I wouldn't print it again without inking it, but I don't have to clean the plate off. As I said, I just add ink just the way I did the first time around, and attempt to wipe it exactly the same way I did last time. That's part of the trick of printmaking. It's not always easy to do that. And sometimes the first one goes really, really well, and the second one is too dark or too light, and then the third one isn't the same. But eventually you get the hang of it, and you will start being able to reproduce each time an identical or nearly identical impression. For anyone who knows me, you know that I like to talk a lot. But I'm going to just stop for a second here, and you can watch the rest of the wiping of this plate.
So after wiping the plate down with my tarlatan, I'm going to do all four sides. You can see without a camera in my way, it's much easier for me to do this. And this is why I wear an apron. I would never do this with a white t-shirt on. Actually, that's why I generally wear black t-shirts only. But in any event, having an apron on allows me to use my body to hold the plate if I need to. Now, if I'm working with a really big plate, keeping it on the glass might be the way to go. But with a medium sized or even a small plate, being able to hold it carefully from below is the easiest way to ensure you can wipe it and maintain control over it. So after the phone book pieces, one more zip around the edges with the red rag, and there's my plate ready to print. Place my plate on the template, move it into position, and then go and get my paper from the water bath. I must caution you to only take out one sheet at a time. Drip it, blot it, and then bring it over and print it. If you take out more than one sheet at a time, it will get too dry, and I promise you will end up with an impression that will not make you happy. Okay, so we've just run it through the press. We're gonna peel it back and have a look at how we did. And what I can tell you is it looks pretty identical to the first one. So I can print as many more as I need to. And when I'm done for the day or for the project, I'm going to clean the ink out of my plate. So I place it on the newspaper, put some vegetable oil on, and then use one of the toothbrushes to gently move around the plate dislodging the ink from the lines. And then I can take a gray shop towel, one of the studio rags, and wipe away all that mess. Well, I've got an oily towel, I'll hit the back just to make sure it's relatively clean. And if I have any stubborn areas, I can use a bit of biodiesel, but it's not always necessary. So assuming that the plate is relatively clean, but now just a bit oily, I put some roller cleaner on, which is just dish soap and water. And I'll use one of my blue shop towels, one of the disposable ones to wipe the surface of the plate. Then I'll hit it with a bit of vinegar. This will help keep it from oxidizing, degrease it further. And there's our plate clean and ready to use another day. And now clean up. Everybody hates to clean up because they're so tired from all that printing, but you've got to do it or else the place is a disaster. So put away your red rag and put away your tarlatan, and then it's time to clean up your ink. If you've been in my classes before, you've seen me clean up ink many times, but I like to include it because it is so integral to the successful communal operation of our studio. So we scrape up the most of the ink with our uh, razor blade, and then we can wipe our squeegee and our palette knife onto the phone book. We can very carefully use that razor blade to remove a bit of ink from the palette knife if there's a lot on there. And then a bit of vegetable oil. Vegetable oil and the gray rag will take away almost all the ink that's there, leaving only a bit of grease behind. And we're going to use this same rag to clean our tools. Be very, very, very careful when you're using uh, the rag to clean your razor blade. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you could really hurt yourself, so be careful. So wiping off all of our tools, including that little rubber squeegee, which often gets missed, make sure you've wiped it off as much as you can. Make it as clean as you can. Try to leave the glass better than you found it. And then we're going to hit everything, glass and tools, with some vinegar and a shop towel or some paper towel or even a bit of phone book page if you don't have any of those things. And this gets rid of the oily residue that is left on the tools and on the glass. Once you've wiped up all of your tools and your bits and pieces, put them in their respective places for use by someone else later on. Put the knife and the blade away, put your ink away, and then go over and tidy up the press. Clean off any leftover ink on your mylar with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, some rubbing alcohol, and a blue shop towel. Pick up your template, roll it up. You can use the tape bits to hold it together and pop that into your drawer. And then disengage the press. And often that just means running the press right off the end of the blankets. Then you can fold the blankets, help the bed get back roughly into position, use the wheel to center it, and then place the blankets over top of the press the way you found it. You're almost done cleaning up, so hang up your towel so that it can dry, and then go and dump your water out of your tray. Tilt the tray against the wall. Or if you have the whole sink going, pull that plug out and let the water drain. And you're done.